Hello folks, Lucian here with Into the Chasm. I got my brother from another mother on here. This is Dusty Lee Lynch. Hey everybody. Mr. Fudd. Hey, we're man. gonna we're gonna talk about some cool stuff today. Cool. I'm forgetting where my camera is. Hello. Shalom. So Dustin over here, he uh he plays bass for nineties kids. I had yes. Matt on here about a month ago. Yes. Uh, time freaking flies. And uh, how long have you guys been a band again? Oh, man. I think we're up just over the three-year mark right now. Three. Three years? Going on four, yeah. Man, um, time flies. It, it, it doesn't sound real. The whole pandemic, uh -huh. shutting the bars down, you know. Oh, what would you guys do during that? We just practiced as much as we could. Yeah. Um, some of us, you know, they, and, you know, a few people ended up getting it. I never got COVID, did you? Yes. I, I, I think I got it a couple times. Really? I think. Well, so, like, March of 2020, I was working at this restaurant called S&B's Burger Joint in Car Carbonell, did you ever go there? I ha yes, was in, at I least once amazing, or twice. Cool yeah. vibe. It yeah. was just fucking phenomenal. Uh, posters and stuff. I actually got the Kurt Cobain poster from there. Love the eyeliner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jacob Hamildeuse, his, uh, his his wifey, uh, snagged that from me. That's awesome. For me. Cool. Yeah, from because uh, we worked there together as well. Oh, I forgot you worked with her. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. She's cool. Blair. Yes, I do um, love Blair. But so March 2020, right whenever COVID happened, uh, or right before COVID happened, we had all been working, and for like a month straight, people just kept getting knocked out. Oof. Like, knocked out. Like, I, I had, I've got a pretty good immune system, and something got me to where I was just draining and just felt heavy and just yeah. bad. I don't know. I guess maybe me working outside of not being that vitamin in, D, man. Yeah, I mean, you've got I, the sun coming yeah. right on you. That is the biggest healer of everything. I, and I got lucky, I guess, not being indoors with, like, a big group of people a lot. And So, yeah, we, we practiced all through COVID, and yeah. then once bars started to reopen, I feel like we were we were fine we were ready to to actually kind of tear the house down yeah. a little bit probably, and, probably uh, a lot of pin up energy oh man it was like, great it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah we have a lot of fun man 90s kids um you know, I think with the music world, cover bands kind of get in this category where they're kind of marked as lame. Yeah. In a way, you know, yeah. obviously as musicians, we respect yeah. that. Yeah. Me, I was a, a touring musician forever. So in that in that environment, a, a uh, cover band doesn't seem all that cool. But yeah. 90s kids, man, we have figured out a formula, a formula that uh, our shows are just fun. Yeah. Our crowd is starting to figure out that we're there to just run the party for them yeah that kind of thing yeah you're the amplifier yes yeah yes so um and with 90s kids we're also always learning new new stuff yeah we uh, we, we did have you know one set for a few shows then we'll go with the next one we uh -huh. always try to rotate even if it's not a brand new song we learned it a long time ago yeah we'll try and throw one in there i think right now we're in the 80s or 90s of uh -huh. how many songs we play yeah me and Bat matt we're talking about we might be like 80s slash 90s slash 2000s band well <laughs> as far as i just mean numbers we know uh -huh. that many songs Holy not shit. just yeah, that so you era a vault in your brain at yeah this point. and it has sometimes it gets co a couple cobwebs on it but uh -huh. anyway no um i think we've kind of stayed away from the 80s uh -huh. the decade yeah but early 2000s is already kind of on our doorstep we're, yeah. we're flirting with it already why not yeah. i mean because i don't think we want our name to imply that we're only going to play 90s music yeah i think that's just what our, where our brain is it our brain the door is to, e to people understanding at least what the direction is yes i think yes and well in, in 2000s as well i mean there's so much that was an extension of the 90s really yeah man early 2000s it was up still to like 2005 ish before yeah. especially before like the emo pop stuff mm -hmm. like fallout boy and oh my god yeah so like we have we've already learned a couple hot topic was still good yes we've already learned a couple blink songs i think cool. we'll we'll mess with maybe some sum 41 even oh sweet off the chuck uh, album or yeah, yeah that was such a fun album that's yeah. actually one of my favorite albums of all time was the chuck album because they went a little heavy. There was even some double bass. Well, in that maybe album. that might not be the album we're talking huh? about. Into like deep, into yeah, deep, yeah, stuff like that. And this is just stuff we're looking yeah. at. We're we're also. Um, I think we might start doing some kind of poll with our fans, like what they might want to hear. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, we just always want things to be fresh. Yeah, you know what I mean. Keep everything fun. We try not to play too much. Mm -hmm. We try to play a show here and there, the yeah. right areas, so people, you know stay fresh and flock to you yes we love okay, a good crowd so, so as far as music because you've been in quite a few bands <sighs> i mean i've known you for fucking ever now and yeah. prevent this tragedy and yeah. darling parade yeah. as well yeah um how how would you say you as a musician you have changed musically over the years oh man 
Well, first of all, like I was mentioning, that covers thing. I think opening that door for me. Yeah. I, growing as a bass player, p- being able to play some of those songs, yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers, and, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, you even, you know, The Way, that song by um, Fastball. Anyone uh, can see the road. That, that bass down. line is wicked. And really? you would never even know. Really? Yes. Yeah, because you don't really pick up on that. That bass line is wicked. Huh. So, um, over the years. What about any Muse? Did you ever pick up any uh, Muse? They've I never, got some crazy bass in there. Yes, I, and I've always loved them. I uh, love watching live vid- videos of uh, those guys. Yeah. Because even as three people, yeah. they control a whole stadium. Yeah. And, and you know. At, they've they got had, huge shows. They, and they have the light up wristbands and stuff that like go with the Muse music what? it's crazy coldplay does that stuff too trippy I yeah, didn't even know yeah. That was a thing oh man live sh- live music is like to me uh-huh. that is you can you cannot beat Unmatched. it yeah yeah yes but as a player you know darling parade was a huge experience for me we toured that the world i mean we did a lot of cool stuff yeah military stuff Kristen, she's from harrisburg yep. nate he grew up down in viana area yeah uh, our drummer casey he was from out of state but those three people were my family for like five years we, awesome. I love those guys. Kristen is so good, man. Yeah, she One, does acoustic shows every once in a while. Her I voice think. is just pure. Oh, it's great. Just getting to play that many shows. That's one thing I actually wish I would have written down over time uh-huh. is keeping track of how many shows I've played because it's had it's got to be cool hundreds journal. by now. Yeah. Before Darling Parade, they considered me because I was playing bass for Clock Tower Showdown. That's right. That's right. I knew Nate because I was in the Rose McCoy right before oh my God, I, I joined. About and that. we yeah. wrote that EP in, EP in the Rose yeah. McCoy. And I was in the studio with the Rose McCoy. And Clock Tower was already texting me trying to because they they were losing their bass player yeah. and they were interested. <laughs> so I had a dilemma there, but um, Nate was a singer of Rose McCoy, and Nate is uh-huh. how I had that connection to Darling Parade. Okay, but in this specific band, '90s Kids, growing just as a phys- just a physical player yeah. has been the biggest change. I think all of us recognize that we've all gotten a lot better. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you you start to learn that many songs. That's a lot that that's like a vault of information the, I, and, it's and, overwhelming and you get so many different style ideas from different musicians when you learn how they play a song yes as well and then you have a guy like matt bosler who if you gave him a chance he would he wants to learn new songs yeah all, you know but the problem is we also run into this even with the new material what do we get rid of uh-huh. Because oh, yeah. we all love all what we play. And your fans, are they're going to get biased and they're going to be like, play the one song yes, again. Yeah. I, I think we would like to be at some stage, someone, you know, we will take a request if yeah. if we know it. Or if the person knows that, you know, hey, we can try something. We, yeah. we you know, because that, that's kind of fun. We'll slam it, but you know what? Yeah. Damn it, we'll try we'll it. We'll give yeah. it a shot. We've done that a few times. Yeah, man. I, I think uh, the learning the new material for, for my brain, it overwhelms me. And the guys would tell you, right? Right away that I, I wear that part on my sleeve. That's I'm like, awesome. dude, how am I going to do this? There's no <laughs> way. Yeah, it's interesting for sure. Okay, so um, as far as shows, I mean, because you've done hundreds of shows, if not yes. more than that at maybe, this point. Th- maybe over a thousand. Maybe, maybe a thousand. Um, do you have recently, as far as 90s kids, and then after that, I'll follow up with the other question, any older uh, experiences as far as show-wise that like it changed you? Like you had a moment on stage where you're like, oh, Mm, I will say, prevent this tragedy. Uh-huh. Back in you know, back yeah. in those days, the music scene was crazy, man. It was but so fun. All of those kids in Heron and Harrisburg, Town. yeah, man. And I still run into people from those days that know me from that. Yeah. And and we're still just like buds right off the of, you know. Yeah. I still love a lot of people from that era. Seeing the brotherhood that could come from being with all of those bands and mm-hmm. you guys just you know even if there was no one there. The yeah. bands would at least watch each other. Yeah. So it they was were like, always their best supporters. Yeah. yeah. And we, you know, most times we wouldn't even get gas money. Darling Parade, we didn't, you know, we we were self-funded. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, seeing back in the Prevent This Tragedy thing, just seeing how even the fans, the way they would yell everything back at us and those shows were nuts. I remember that. I remember that. Oh. Yeah, you, you'd always have a bunch of teenagers right at the front, like three deep and yeah. everywhere. Respect your God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. That's nuts. Yeah, I, it's weird to even think that that much time has gone by to begin with. Yeah. Um, I can remember seeing Hamilton doing hardcore dances in the middle of the mosh pit. Or, yeah, and the funny thing is, he was the original drummer. That is, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That was, oh, my God, that's been some time. Yeah, and, uh, man, whenever we started PTT, there really wasn't 
many local metal bands just yet. No. We were we were kind of on the front lip of that. Yeah, um, no, yeah, for sure. And I think that helped with a little bit of popularity with us. Not that we weren't good, because I mean, I think for the area we were pretty good. No, you were great. But yeah, that that I mean, it ex- left a mark. You that know what CC I mean? people, it left yeah. A mark. So that experience itself, that's pretty freaking cool. Well, I mean, I didn't hate it. I, I have it on my cloud. How many? Yeah, years you left? have it, and I don't. That's <laughs> yeah. actually I got a flash drive here somewhere. I'll throw it on there for you. All right. Just don't let me forget because my yeah. memory memory's terrible. But you guys, you left a mark um, because. Not only do I remember this because, A, it was part of a time I was growing up that was just so profound. You all had such an impact on who I became musically and just like who I became in general. Um, Just all those funny experiences that come with also being around musicians and friends in bands and just all this energy and all this momentum and funny life experiences. Like I'm sure even you being on the road probably have 90,000 hilarious gut-wrenching like moments between you and friends that you can't even put on words. Yeah, just crying, laughing. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of the best part of it. I think that's probably, would you say, one of the things that sweetens it for having to actually put so much into it is the experience itself of yeah. you get so much. That, back dude, that's out a of good it. point. You I like that. You're, you're, you're paying time and you're getting experience. Definitely. Life I, experience back. Well, and, and <clears throat> like you said, for, it, for me, laughs are some form of currency. I enjoy comic, you know, comedic moments that just naturally happen. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of musicians are just kind of funny people. Yeah. I, I, we just like to mess with each other yeah. and um well it takes a certain level of intelligence to be able to play a freaking instrument to begin with yeah and on top of that as a musician i, I think a lot of musicians are borderline comedians because if, their brain way, remembers yeah. so much specific information like you have to remember five seven eight hammer on you know like there's yeah. so much happening in your brain 19 steps in a chess game right where you're thinking of all these well it's not a simple task not at all no there's a lot of love and a lot of fun that comes out of the music and i Absolutely. think that was i think that is what we're missing around here right now well and that's something i would bring up is i'm starting to feel like it's coming back yes um because you know like i said you, at these shows that we're playing yeah i see a lot of my old musician friends yeah that are just like you know some it's there yeah people to wanted hi. to come back and man yeah. this last show with the mill that we just played yeah the crowd surfing and the it got in i don't know if you've seen those videos uh-uh. it, got, to me. it got crazy really? yeah yeah talking blink 182 on a big beach in mm, california yes crazy. yeah <laughs> and i think uh, like i said uh, at the beginning i think people are starting to figure out that this band is about us going and having a good time yeah everybody just needs to come let loose for a little while yeah let us take care of it but it, to your point i'm seeing that come back i'm seeing yeah. because even hanging out with you know at the mill we played with murphy 500 yeah um our first time ever playing with those guys first time me really meeting most of those guys yeah super nice guys and it felt like hanging out with those you know the bands that you wanted to mm-hmm. same with teddy lamaster in mm-hmm. mount vernon we played a few shows well we played one show with him and he came to our db show and we just have fun with those guys yeah. which they just understand yeah uh, we all understand each other on yeah. a certain level there's a certain like liveliness between yeah. musicians yeah. This, this this creative juice that comes yeah. between you so that feeds it feels like it's feeding the scene even more yeah uh, even just people seeing the bands have a good time on yeah. the stage not be uptight and just yeah. you know they're there to have not fun military too. with music it's yeah like you're having fun exactly what is it you think that happened because back from prevent this prevent this tragedy to my virgin eyes to all these different local bands and stuff where where did the music go is it just you think a lot of venues just closed and nobody had a place to outlet that anymore i would say especially that age group once teen town and stuff like that disappears i mean shoot even in harrisburg we would throw a show at this old school i forget what the school was called is that the one we did a show with giddy up gangsta no that was a different one i forgot about that band yeah (laughs) I'm pretty sure I was on cough medicine when I went to that show. Oh, my God, dude. I do not. Yeah. Um, But I think, yeah, I think the venue started to kind of drop off on us. And I think as a lot of us got older and started to kind of move away, because I think a couple dudes, even in like My Virgin Eyes, they started moving off. I think Drummer went to Chicago. So, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah. Military, well, and, wife and, and kids. And the, the fan base was growing with us. Yeah. So everyone was kind of like watching your kids grow up. Yeah. They find other things to do eventually. Yeah. Well, I know specifically with, with Prevent This Tragedy, Tally moved, our screamer moved, yep. to go to Full Sail yep. in Florida. He yeah. still does, he hey, it. to he's his still credit, doing it. still he's, doing he's it. He's in uh, Chicago now, isn't Yes, yeah. Cool. I still talk to him quite a bit, too. It, we would. I don't think we would have broken up if he wouldn't have moved. Yeah. Um, well, you guys had you had so much love in like in your band, like pure nostalgia. Um, 
pure, like the most loyal young fan base. And they were growing with you too. Yeah. I mean, I was just y'all's buddy there. And like, I am so grateful of those memories because I have so many stupid freaking thoughts. The, Fair- <laughs> the Fairfield massacre. Oh God. They cheated football. <laughs> oh God. And, um, and so many just ridiculous fucking thoughts. Like I won't even be able to consciously pull them up until something happens in my nine to five life. Yeah. Someone will say something randomly in Fairfield. That's why I'm or- saying I wish someone would have been there to write all this stuff oh, down. Man. Because there's definitely things yeah. I don't remember, but oh my God, yeah. And so- and like you said, we had buddies surrounding the band. Yeah. Like there were guys that were just there because they wanted to hang out around. Maybe maybe you just need someone that is who's got the memory on a computer and a good f- camera, and they're just like, you know what? My job's going to be solidifying the memories for the local artists. That going, would be cool. Going to show somebody that would like just dedicate. Hey, I'm going to go there. I'm going to start taking videos and pictures and recording funny memories. Yeah. And just making this long connection well, between people. Actually, shout out here to Terry, a new uh, um, a guy that's been following '90s kids. Mm-hmm. He's from Mount Vernon, and he's the guy that's been posting in some of these crazy videos cool. and he's terry's got all this gear and he's just kind of looking to he just wants to get out there and he yeah. wants to and that's what he, he even films the, the parking lot moments and so oh, yeah. so he's getting yeah. stuff like cool. that he's yeah getting the nuggets yeah, yeah 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 so um okay so you guys are doing good shows will you do house shows yeah we will do a private party yes okay um if the we i believe we're doing one here pretty soon it's gonna be a private party yeah. <clears throat> you probably won't see it online we probably sure, won't yeah. promote it or anything but yeah we we're down to do weddings even we're down to do whatever um the circumstance we just given the right booking you know the right time and um our manager jordan does a great job of running our social media i think boz talked about that on his episode and yeah these shows feel like the old shows it's starting to feel awesome that's awesome that's 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 a beacon of energy and that runs off on people yes yeah okay so is there like a specific show you've seen other bands play or a specific place that you've looked at and you're like, I would like to play that show or a place that you could see. Oh, you mean playing. like, oh, like a like big 90s one. kids playing on a stage okay, somewhere. Dude. If we ever somehow got booked at the pageant for something, I would not be able to contain uh, contain myself. Okay. I don't so know. So the pageant plug, they're wanting the pageant plug. <laughs> all right. I, that St. Louis, the pageant, dude, that, that venue is so good. Camera's right there if you want to tell them. The pageant. I don't know if they want to do 90s. Well, it's not just 90s. You should do 90s kids. All right. Hit it. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I would love – that would be a dream. Mm-hmm. It's not really in the realm of possibility right now, but you mm-hmm. see some of these shows that, like, even Foo Fighters play where they make – they get these kids up there. Yeah. Like, Dave Grohl handing his guitar to a kid. He's makes so cool. That'll make me cry I every love time. Dave Grohl. He seems like such a genuine <sighs> human being. Now he's got ultimate – like – He's got ultimate dad vibes yeah. now. Like, just good person. And he just came out with a movie. Did you watch their oh, movie? Oh, did I? Did you? Yeah. Was it awesome? Yes, dude. It's very funny. So it's, it's worth watching. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I would I would recommend it. You can buy it now, actually. Oh, sweet. Yeah. As far as instruments. So, I know your first love was drums, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Drums was your first baby. And then guitar, was that, was that your second? Guitar was my second, yes. Okay, guitar. Um, and then bass is kind of slowly bass trickled your, in yeah yeah, yeah. Over the years. well i think man it is crazy how circumstances and opportunities will mold mm-hmm. a person yeah because it even molded my interests i was yeah. uh I, I was interested in drums wholeheartedly wanted to be a drummer yeah and you slayed I, them too man but they, nasty they, Nowadays, oof. Uh, <laughs> Same. But, <laughs> you're, yeah, you were a good drummer, too. Yeah. You got it. But, dude, I, I think I uh, I started doing guitar when I was maybe eight. My dad got me a, new, a guitar. Uh-huh. He had already bought me a drum set. I already had one by the time I was, like, four or five. Yeah. And he, to note, my dad was a musician. He yeah. was the drummer of a successful cover band when I was a kid. I got to see him come home from shows every weekend. Thought he was just Superman for doing that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. I, of course, that's what I ended up wanting to do, too. When I was, we were, this was the band that we started back when we were like 15 or 16 with Doug Snedden. I yeah. think we were 15. Uh, that's when I bought my first bass uh-huh. because they could not find a bass player to save their life. Yeah. Tally knew Tally played guitar in that band. He knew that I could play guitar. So he okay. thought, okay, if we can get a bass in his hands, yeah. that band breaks up. We only played maybe one or two shows in that yeah. one with Doug. And Doug and Neff went off from that one to, to start Ghosts on Fire. That's right. With wow. Germ 
That and was a Dave Zakalik. Yeah. Holy shit. Did anyone ever now what was the band you tally and Doug? That was called Three Last Words. That's what it fucking was. Yes. Three last words. And that's how I ever record anything on anything. No, not really. Did, that was before there is, phones too, wasn't it? I believe there is a camcorder tape of us somewhere. Who had it? It might have been Neff. I don't know. Someone has a uh, a camcorder tape, I believe. You gotta get that shit thrown on the fucking <laughs> CD. That had to have been what, two thousand three? Three. Yeah. Dude. Like four, four, so, and we played Cesar Homecoming that year. We went won the Battle of the Bands that year. You guys sounded great. Thank you. Like, like I, I mean, yeah, most of the bands you've been in around here sound fucking phenomenal. I mean, it's... We well, practiced. There's a lot of creative talent around here, and it's weird that it, a lot came out of Benton. Yeah, Benton and Heron. Yeah, it was really weird. I think I think it was because we all grew up and, uh, and clicked together in in that. Like we all loved music. There's like music. a beacon. I mean, all a lot of you. I mean, even I know Raby, uh, one of Raby's Gosh. big brothers. Um, I mean, they were that whole that family. Band. The, vis- the visual, the visual, right? yeah. And that rubbed off on him. And there's like this creative essence or beam of just stuff. You know, that all local musicians kind of just connect with. Yeah. And it rubs off on each other. And they're like, I well, it's think inspirational. we can get that going. Yeah. And I think you're already seeing it, like you said. It is it is coming back a little bit. And whenever Doug and Neff went off to start Ghost on Fire, that's when me and Tally started flirting with the PTT idea. Uh-huh. I believe there was a hiatus there where mm. I kind of didn't have a band yeah. for a little bit. Oh, my God. Maybe that was when I played in Arnick. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah. I've been in way too many bands <laughs> not enough i've no. been in way too many bands um i completely just been it. hopping through them over the and years and then for a short spurt i was, was in a band with miles. you oh and miles as well streetlight samurai yes. too yes. So yeah, dude i yes. forgot about I that forgot. I, with chris good anywhere? oh i'm sure i got them on my computer yeah, somewhere bust those out somewhere and just yeah. throw them on itunes for no reason yeah um, i know, know what i know like. clock tower is still on spotify yeah. clock tower showdown and i know the rose mccoy is still on spotify uh-huh. Which is cool. Yeah. That's three, because ba- Darling Parade is uh, on there. Yeah. So three projects that are still on Spotify, that's not bad. That's badass. That's a yeah, pretty that's good dope. record. Yeah. That's dope. Um, yeah. Not that it's that big of a thing to get it on. I mean, anybody could put stuff on Spotify, but it's still, still cool. It's still, it's still cool. dope. It's still dope. So. It, it's still an accomplishment. I mean, I mean. Thank you. A lot of people don't really actually go for what they want to do. I um, spent years without a job. I yeah. lived, dude, I lived in my grandparents' basement the whole time I was in Darling Parade. Yeah. Because I would be gone for months, yeah. and then they would take care of my dog and oh. I would like come home and mow the yard for him for yeah. you know do little stuff yeah. and I love being around my family I'm a big family guy for sure so yeah. you are too but yeah we, that's a good point a lot of people wouldn't have done that most yeah. people I was working at Verizon Mount in Vernon. Mount Vernon yeah. and I got a phone call from a weird number and I thought this kind of looks like Nate Mm-hmm. And it was Nate, and he said he was in Nashville, and he I was at work, and he was like, "Hey man, we want you to come try out because they had just lost their guitar player, and he was playing bass." Yeah, this is another fun fact. Cool. I switched back to bass after being okay. So when I was in the Rose McCoy, I was lead guitar. Yeah, and I wrote a lot, a couple of those songs. Yeah, a couple of them were already written by Nate and a few other guys. I was on guitar. Clock Tower calls me and needs the bass player. So I rip out the bass again. I'm like, all right, let's just keep going up the ladder. Because that time, Clock Tower, I mean, Rose McCoy, we were great, I thought. Oh, Um, yeah, yeah, you guys were sounding really good. um, But Clock Tower, we all, Mm -hmm. like, watched them like, oh, this is... This is well, the, they were pinnacle. They were the elite. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were, that's the word. Exactly. Yeah. Elite. Yeah. For this area. So for me to be asked, I was so like, I was hyped, dude. And I was yeah. in it for a little over a year. I loved being in that band playing with Todd and Ryan and Casey yeah. and Dustin. It, we were, we were good together. I thought, um, yeah, yeah. Then, so here's the fun fact. Darling Parade called me to try out on guitar mm-hmm. and I got there with my guitar and I did not do well. <laughs> <laughs> I had been pl- I had been working at Verizon forever, yeah. and I hadn't played guitar in for probably a year oh, and a so half. The passion went down for a bit. Yes, yes, okay. yes. After Clock Tower broke up, yeah. I was which is a pattern for yeah. me. Well, Clock Tower broke up, and I was heartbroken. Yeah. I was like, "Damn, man! You know, we were we were doing good. We had a little bit of label interest, but it just yeah. wasn't really clicking." Yeah. And, you know, everybody kind of wanted to go off and do their own thing, yeah. respectively. Yeah. I mean, at one time, you got to call it sometimes. Yeah. If the juice doesn't start coming out, you got to move on to a different tree. Yeah, oh, good. I like that. But with Clock Tower, it was it was a shame for it to break up, and and we did. And I went on a little bit of a hiatus. I put pretty much all my effort into work, 
and yeah. I, you know, Verizon, I got, I got decent at that. And so, yeah. So then Darling Parade calls me. I end up trying out. I didn't do so great on guitar and I made it back to Illinois from Nashville and I knew I didn't do great. Yeah. But I also knew that we all had good laughs together good while I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Nate, so the vibe was there. It was there, yeah. and Nate n- knew how to play guitar. Nate's, yeah. Nate's better at guitar than I was anyway. Yeah. So he calls me, and he's like, hey, we, if you want to be in it, we'll do the old swap I'll play guitar, and you can play bass, because I know you can do that. Yeah. So <laughs> I, and I know you're at least good enough to do that. Yeah. Um, That's still awesome, though. Yeah. yeah. And I grew as a bass player with Darling Parade a lot. I'm, I mean, we did That's really – cool. So yeah. that could have been like the, the – the thing that sealed the deal for your bass thing to begin with in the long term. And now here I am. It could have been to you just like an accidental joke, like, oopsie, I yeah. became the bass player. And now you're like, actually, this is how I now know I'm really fucking good at bass. Yeah. Slapping that bass. And even now in the area, I mean, if I if I was talking to any young musician and they were trying to figure out what to play, ba- bass is su- there's such a shortage because yeah well the guitarists kind of always get the spotlight the drummers is guitarists and the unless you're well. a, unless you're a great bass player yeah that's, that's right, right. <laughs> um but yeah you're right drummers are the cool guy uh-huh. guitar player lead they singer you know kind of cliche yeah them, you know um i in 90s kids i kind of like to be bosler's sidekick a little uh-huh. bit you know like yeah. kind of also banter with the crowd and we well, make he's got that lightning fucking Ooh. energy like it's just like you don't even if you had two lightning energy on the state, like everything might get kind of fucked he up. He is absolutely, <laughs> he's absolutely insane. Like he, he does, you he's, guys put on an awesome show. Thank you. And, and it's just out of pure joy. Yeah, and we just like doing it. I do not see anyone having no fun. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and we all share that, like you talk about, that mutual love. I yeah. love all three of those guys like yeah. brothers, man. Yeah. We fight like brothers. We are, we're in communication every single day. Yeah. Um, we're very close. It's like a, almost like a, a an adult adult summer camp, yeah, like boys camp all ends. the time. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, it's I think that's healthy for your inner child too. Yeah, and we get to just joke around with the boys and get ideas out, and it's a good outlet. That's healthy as shit. It's good. It, it's weird to think at one point we that there were so many active bands in this area, like not Man. even just this area, but all the way down to Salem to St. Louis. I know St. Louis doesn't. I know that St. Louis is always still popping with bands, but I remember stuff like Calico System. Oh, yeah. And what Very was that good. other band um, the Black Be- Blackwell Brothers were in? Uh, well, they had When Morning Comes, and then they that had – That was – and actually – A long time ago. Yeah, When Morning Comes is the band that my now boss was in, Johnny. Uh-huh. We, I build and remodel houses. Yeah. That is his business. Wow. So <laughs> he, we played – yeah, we played shows with him in Three That's Last Words. nuts. Um. So yes, Denny and Andrew were in that, and then they had that band in Fear and Faith. That's right. That one they had all the bright colors, uh-huh. and they had a pretty hot. I li- they had a one good lyric of theirs, and I don't remember which band it was, but it said something about the singer was. Uh, what was the singer's name? Andrew. I remember the lyrics were like 14 million memories or something. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. The microphone. Um, <laughs> that was actually a really fun band to watch too. You guys oh, live they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I mean, even now, man, there is a scene in Carbondale right now. Really? Like of local bands. There's a yeah. band called Trophy Shop. I oh, no, really yeah. love John's those guys. Band. Yes. I yes. Him at Underground for a little bit. Um, I love all four of those guys. Yeah. Um, John's got great juju as well. He is a, Such a great nice guy. Yeah. Person. Yeah. And, uh, He's Buzzard, Buzzard. They're great too. Uh-huh. That's Casey Rogers band. Okay. It's not, you know, his, but, uh, Casey Rogers, Danny, uh, Brown. I love all those guys too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's still local stuff going on. I think it's more popular for you to see more acoustic artists because mm-hmm. it is more affordable yeah. for some events and stuff like that. Well, so another question. So I know when we were kids, we had the benefit of having all these places that would just open the doors to concerts. That they're just like yeah, you they, wouldn't yeah. have to be a bar, right? We went to uh, hits and stuff yeah, like just that. Just community centers where it was just like yeah, exact community centers. They'd open up these like little food stands while there's shows and stuff. People eat like some nachos, drink some Powerades or something. Do local places not really do much of that anymore? Like, Ooh, I am so out of the loop on that one. I 
I can tell you I don't see a lot of flyers. Yeah, I have I haven't heard much of anything about stuff like that anymore. I don't know that you know I I might be wrong about this, but I don't know that there's a lot of locations for kids to put yeah. on their own shows. See, I would have to say that is one thing we need to get back because kids are the one, we were the ones that made all that happen. Yeah, the you know, book. All, yeah, all of those connections and all those bands that communicated through all those local shows. I mean, when the scene here and all that crazy mm-hmm. shit happened. You weren't get. I mean, unless uh, with the exception of Dirty Hall, I was gonna bring him up in a uh, second. Yeah, he he he, he was he, the plug, man. He yeah, was, he was the glue. I the always area. liked him, man. We, and we, it, he needs to train somebody, and he probably did over yeah. time. I'm sure there are a few that, booking guys that came out of that somewhere. Yeah, um, but most of those shows, if unless it was dirty, it was probably a band yeah. running it. You remember those shows we would even throw in Tally's garage? Yeah. Yeah, when uh, I mean, we would play anywhere we could. Yeah, there was. Uh, it was just fun. Yeah, who was that guy that had the really spiky hair and he ended up like slicing somebody with his hair? Matt Glenn. Oh my God, where'd he go? I haven't heard about him I, in a long time. Man, I saw him maybe like ten years ago. I, I don't know. I can't remember where. Maybe in Carbondale or something. But that was the only time. That was the last time I saw those him. Shows those those garage shows were fun. You had like we'd have. There'd be like 15, 20 kids in that little tiny tally fucking garage, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, m- more sometimes. Yeah, that was nuts, and it was and it was a blast too. Yeah, it was awesome. They're all that creative space for people to just have fun and. Um, okay, so next question. Um, so you you've done drums, guitar, bass. Is there another instrument you've kind of always eyeballed, and you'd be like, maybe. I've messed with a piano. Okay. Yeah. And and with bass, I just recently switched to a five string. Okay. I was playing four string. Yeah. I did not understand that concept. I, you know, and I don't know why it didn't click in my brain, but now that I have a five string, it's so uh-huh. it's so easy. Flows better. And with a, a cover band um live just hitting those low Bs or the uh-huh. low C, it really just rattles that place. Uh-huh. And, you can feel it as you're uh, playing oh, in the speakers, man. yeah. And it just, woof, yeah. So piano, that piano, is yeah, difficult as shit. That's why I dabble. I don't, um, I don't play. I, went out <laughs> and I, bought a, I, I bought a piano thing. I'm gonna just teach myself. I picked uh, up the drums, guitar, kind of just taught myself both. Certainly, I could pick up piano. It's just a couple notes. And then you don't realize like it's structure, dif- dude. Yeah. Exactly. Your fingers can't just hit the note. No. Nope. There has to be a certain finger muscle dexterity. You have to be able to like. There's a timing to the amount of time your finger hits the bottom yes. of the key there's itself. There's even even with the foot pedal on, you can let certain notes go. Yeah. And to me, it it fries my brain. Oh, that what that is exactly what I was saying. I fried. Yeah. yeah. Trying to understand piano. I think. But I think it's just because it's yeah. A structure. Yeah. It's a different structure. My, I'm wired different already. So. Yeah. But you got somebody like Andrew Hart Finnegan. Uh huh. Fantastic at piano. Oh, have really? you ever heard him play piano? I don't know. I think I went to his house he, one time, and I think he bust out on that piano. My goodness. He can make that thing sing, dude. Very good. How's he doing? I talked to him. In Chicago as well? Yes. I talked to him a few days ago. We're going to try and go to Riot Fest this year, Sweet. I think. Uh, Yellow Card's going to do a set. They are still around? They are not, they're but not. they're getting back together for that show. That's nice. They hung up the cleats a couple years ago. They must but. be getting paid a fat stack. I'd say, and just uh, I, I think a lot of fan bases are craving stuff like well, that right they're, now. They're fans haven't gone away. If anything, no. this younger generation is so. We've old. just all got money now. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, and and I think the cool thing about iTunes and Spotify is all these younger kids. Well, they don't go outside anymore, so they have all this time inside yeah. to just listen to music, and they're finding old music. I mean, there was a guy that messaged me about Giddy Up Gangsta off of Instagram. Wow. Um, I don't know if I did I tell you about that. No. I don't so know. some random dude just messaged me. He's just like, "Hey, were you the bass player of Giddy Up Gangsta?" And I'm like, "Huh." Wow. Specific. Well, for how long were we even in it? Maybe months. A couple months, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was too long. It wasn't and more than like, a few how shows. How do you a remember that? And B, he's like, "Well, I was putting together this EP of old like oh, metal yeah. bands. Of uh, he has this Instagram. I get. I can't remember what it's called." But he finds old metal bands off YouTube. Is his name Mike? Maybe. I don't remember. There's a local dude that always liked all well, the... he's not uh, local. Oh, okay. He's from no somewhere run. other state where he just found Giddy Up Gangsta on YouTube. Oh, and I see. Just was throwing it all together. Yeah. Um, Fans everywhere. I plugged him with Frankie and all them. And he actually like re-released the, their music on a CD with a couple shirts hmm. and a fake bloody tooth in it and stuff. <laughs> Randomly, he, like six he, months ago. They always did the gory stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, okay, so instruments. Your piano sounds cool. Isn't easy. No, no. Uh, I respect piano players uh, like crazy. Okay, so, okay, so for in being dedicated to '90s kids, if you had the opportunity to play bass or guitar for a specific band, local or huge, for uh -huh. one week, uh -huh. is there like a band or uh, Foo Fighters? Foo, bam, right there. Yeah, it's, man, no without question. a doubt. Yeah, if I had one, mm -hmm. if I just just one, that's the one. Yeah, and they're playing a sold out stadium. Yeah. And I just all of a sudden I just know the songs, right? Yeah. I don't have to go through like a bunch of. You know what? How cool would it be if somehow, like down in the future, say '90s kids just continues growing and it's going to. Yeah, um, there's I would a think lot so of too. emotions and love behind it because you're playing nostalgic music. Yeah. One day you get to somehow plays these huge stages, right? Say one day some of the some of these artists that you're playing for get a hold of hearing your music mm -hmm. of you playing it. What mm -hmm. if like one day you could actually have like a guest? appearance of someone of the original band Dude, doing something that'd like be that. great that'd be awesome I think the cool thing about the internet now is you can actually make shockwaves have you i mean are you yeah are you familiar i know this sounds so ugh. are you familiar with tiktok oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> are you on the tiktok uh, yeah yeah uh on the internet I slow i thought it was a kid on thing the internet whatever. yeah me and, too and, me too and i yeah. kind of made fun of it i did too and i still now i understand yeah but You'll even see old bands like Lit or like Papa Roach, and they'll be like, "Hey, play this riff," and they'll they'll you know duo that video. Yeah. And dude, that's just nothing but good for the band and the 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 experience for the fan. The yeah. fan is feeling like they're part of it too. Yeah. And I think that whole virtual fan type thing is going to become more and more uh, normal. It is. Yeah. I, I think that is. That's hard to even really. Yeah, Fathom you're going to have with yeah. virtual fucking um, concerts. It's going to be a thing in the very near Which future. I don't love. I don't love that. You're not going to get the same. It's experience. not the same. You're not going to feel the sweat and the spit coming off the singer's yeah. freaking mouth. You're not going to get mm -hmm. the hot sun. You're not going to pass out from heat exhaustion and electrical oh, I don't. And tour. Yeah, I um, don't. I never. I don't miss Warp Tour for no, that reason. Warp Tour sucked. Yeah, I mean, I like, it was just a bunch of people passing out. <laughs> like, I went and I saw Sum 41, and like there was like four people that passed out in the audience. So yeah. Like, they're getting trampled right now. Mm -hmm. And people are like, yeah. And then they just hand you a garden hose, and they're like, here, here's some water. There's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> unless you Wake wanna, up. Unless you want to pay $8 for a Dasani that they take the cap, uh, so you cannot r like put the cap back on or refill it. They, it's so like, yeah, that's mean. Psychology. That's mean. That's fucked up. Yeah. So you have to use it all. Yeah. That's messed up. Jesus. Well, so, okay, so as far as um, your guys is, um, I've asked Matt this as well. What is the best way to book you if you're looking? If someone's looking to book you, how would they get a hold of you? Our most active form of social media is definitely Facebook. Um, okay. We do have Instagram. We do have. We even have a TikTok. We yeah. just haven't really tapped in. Those aren't the mains yet. Right. Jordan checks our facebook yeah. constantly and because he is not a player in the band yeah. he's you know more of behind the scenes in the band yeah he gets to focus on those messages you'll hear back from him within minutes or okay. you know you know unless he's super busy on something i don't want to oversell that but <laughs> <laughs> um he's booked from yeah yeah i know this year we're looking at very few dates available uh -huh. already because our singer does do acoustic stuff as well yeah and just like we, us wanting to have time with our families or, course, you know, yeah. enjoy our summer. And work a full-time job. And work. I do work, yes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I uh, forgot. I forgot. Oh, just uh, communicating, like, if oh, they yeah. to book you, how they would get a hold of okay, you. Okay, yeah. So, Facebook. Um, guy's name is Jordan. Super nice guy. We, uh -huh. don't, we don't mess around. And, just, and you guys are open to covers like requests too if as uh, long as it's practical yeah. you know um yeah yeah we we do want to play what they want to hear yeah. like that's the whole point it's yeah. that it's that basic that is literally it it is that so you know we also want to enjoy what we play because yeah. we want to have a good time too of course, um yeah and I like to have fun with like wearing funny shirts we all do yeah you know like a Spice Girl shirt or yeah, whatever I saw that. yeah I yeah I saw that um but that's the, that's the goal here man we and as we get older you get less and less opportunities to do things like that yeah 
And, I mean, mention a show that you could go to locally that would be in the same environment, mm-hmm. uh, and that's what that's what we're shooting for. I mean, we're and we're getting exactly what we're wanting. So. Well, and speaking of local shows, do you know your next local show and where uh, people can find you there? Or, um, uh, yeah, to it? July second in the in Marion, we are mm-hmm. playing. I think it's Knights of Columbus. Okay. They're doing like some firework thing, like a yeah. little firework preview. Pre-force. Yeah. Um. We're playing July second. I think Murphy Five Hundred plays the fourth or something. So we're that's a Saturday. So we'll be there that night. We're playing, you know, our four hour set or whatever. Yeah. And then um, after that one, I would have to get back to you on that. Okay. I can't so just remember. Go on their Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you can't, if you're looking to check them out, uh, Knights of Columbus on the second. Yes, July uh, 2nd. Knights of Columbus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never going to not quote. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. He better say that. On 15 years stage. later. <laughs> I'm just never going to get yeah. over that movie. Oh, man. Um, and if you're looking to catch a future uh, showing, check out their Facebook. That's their main go-to. Um, and if you want to book them, throw them those doll hairs. And, uh, Facebook, yeah. Anything you want to plug on here before I end the stream? Um, n- other than that, no. Um. I am just I'm, I am grateful for all of the fans that do come out to our shows. It's uh, it's important to us, um, and I hope we make all y'all happy. Uh, that seems to be the vibe so far. And um, don't be shy around us. We're always up to hang out, and uh, we might be busy at the show because there's so much going on that we can only say hi real quick and and get moving. But you know, I can have, most of the time I can hardly make it to the bathroom on our breaks because yeah. you know it is people that we all love yeah. and we got to co- talk yeah. to them. And um, but yeah, '90s kids, we're um, we're doing the taking the best stab at it that we can. Mm-hmm. So that's my main plug. And you're doing great. Thank this you, is, brother. You this too. Is legitimately hey. such a good beacon of guys. Like this is like this man right here is such a genuine human Aww, being thank you and everyone in the band as well I, i've met Corey as well and Corey, uh, Matt uh, the drummer, right yes yes um and uh and really if it wasn't for Corey, i probably wouldn't you have two mats in the band yes we, and and matt know. hayes is our sound guy you have three mats. we have three mats you in the camp you have like a, a three-way matt metal cover band that's why when you while. that's why <laughs> that's a good idea <laughs> they, they could do it too they, they got the right it. stuff they need, they, um, <laughs> but I, that's why you'll hear me call Boz Boz because yeah. Matt Bosler yeah. and then Rising is Matt Rising, yeah. and Corey. That's my cousin. I mean, we've I've grown up known him since you know I can remember diapers. And, yeah, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have joined. Oh really? Yeah, he. We ended up work, we were working on a construction site together, and uh, he kind of eventually wore me down to come to practice. Really? Yeah, because did you have reservations at first? Well, yeah, because I was still heartbroken over Darling Parade breaking oh, so your heart up. Still so hurts. it You're was like, like I'm not a, gonna fucking do Yeah, thing. but my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so. Yeah, so it took him some convincing, but I could not be happier that I did it and and uh, I am doing it and we're going to keep doing it. So well, there's now thousands of other people who are glad you did that as well. Um yeah, and couldn't who be happier. knows what you guys are going to make out of this. And thing. I'm proud of you, dude. Look at this. This is great. Thank so you. yeah, yeah. It's and fun. yeah, you've always been a creative soul yourself yeah. and grew up in band together. That's where most of our memories came from. Do you know anyone that has any recordings of our drumline shit? I do. You I do. do. I actually have some. My you mother get some recordings of those on a drive. I believe I have some. I would love some. Us in our little uh our tie-dye shirts that we had. Drums and Roses? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. had that one girlfriend borrow that shirt one day. No. Never got it back. That was Never too... fucking got no. it. No. Whoever has that, <laughs> you give it fucking back. Uh. You don't understand the juju in that shirt. I actually found a, uh, uh. a Giddy Up Gangsta shirt at Goodwill a couple I years back. I couldn't tell you what those looked like. It was a Headless Horseman with like a green like background. Headless thing. Horseman sounds familiar, but... That's very many man that and know. and that one like I said that one was such a flash in the pan for me we were so yeah. in and out with that yeah. one and they yeah. kept they kept going yeah I was never fully in with those guys and it yeah. wasn't nothing it was never anything yeah well that's them. out of genre for you too yeah it was kind of not my my that style kind of became out of genre for me as well because I was still I was at that stage I was becoming a musician and I still didn't have many connections in because I still haven't like 
climb the ladder yet right you know so for me that was like okay i want i gotta start somewhere no that was good guys. and i was there so and they were a lot of fun and having you around as yeah. well uh, i was learning bass and uh that was a lot of fun yeah and you did just fine you know yeah. especially learning yeah um and i liked that group of guys too yeah. hey they they fucked around a uh, lot they were real they're fucking hilarious yeah too. like between yeah. jonathan and brandon um and harb i mean and their friend Gary. I actually have a lot of memories. Gary of was the, funny. In the in the ca- ca- the the brain back here. We had quite a few pretty funny parties with those guys. I don't remember half of them, but I mean they were funny as shit. Yeah. Um but yeah, so um before we go, any any closing statements, my friend? No, man, I love you. I'm I'm so you. happy for you and um yeah, if if we had got any fans that want to come to a show, come have some fun. Um I love my bandmates and Dude, we're just having a good time. Can't stress it enough. Having a good time. Thank you for letting me be here. Yeah, thanks for being on, brother. Thank you, guys. All right, we uh, we are in, ending this stuff. Um, if you want to be a guest, communicate with me on pretty much any platform. I am an internet mole, so I will find your message. Most likely on Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok as well. Um, and yeah, if you want to be a guest, let me know. Y'all, love peace and chicken grease. Bye-bye.